We all set? Well, thanks for coming today, folks. We have, actually, I have two uh, announcements I'd, I'm going to make. The first one uh, involves uh, the filing of criminal charges and a criminal complaint against an individual identified as James Smalley, age 41, of Pena, New York. He was arrested today and charged by in a criminal complaint with uh, fraud involving space vehicle parts in violation of Title 18 United States Code Section 38, a crime which carries a maximum possible term of imprisonment of 10 years. Um, Mr. Smalley worked as a quality assurance engineer at, at PMI Industries, uh, a Rochester Aerospace Precision Machining Service, which specialized in high tolerance machining for flight critical aerospace parts used in uh, space vehicles uh, constructed by SpaceX, uh, the uh, s private aerospace uh, company run by Elon Musk, uh, and other defense de uh, DOD, Department of Defense Aerospace Contractors. Um, among the parts that were precision machined by PMI were uh, nose cone fairings, which were used by SpaceX in some of their uh, aerospace uh, vehicles. In any event, Mr. Smalley worked at PMI since March of 2017, and he was working on the contracts that PMI had with SpaceX, uh, which uh, included the Falcon, Falcon launch vehicle family and the Dragon spacecraft family, both uh, Falcon and Dragon being uh, spacecraft which were, uh, have been built and used by SpaceX. Both of those spacecraft uh, currently deliver payloads into Earth orbit for NASA, the Air Force, and other government agencies, as well as private industry. The criminal complaint alleges that an internal audit conducted by an independent firm, SQA Services, wh who's subcontracted sub with SpaceX, SpaceX to provide quality control assurance to them, um, conducted in January of 2018, revealed that there were multiple, multiple uh, falsified source inspection reports and certifications from PMI Industries for critical parts which were used on the Falcon spacecraft. The investigation to, to date has identified that Mr. Smalley, while he was employed at PMI, falsified at least 38 source inspection reports for space vehicles which were procured by SpaceX uh, for the construction of the Falcon series of space vehicles. The investigation also identified at least 76 individual piece parts that were rejected during source inspection or were never inspected by SQA and then subsequently sh shipped to SpaceX. The complaint alleges that SpaceX uh, records reveal that the following, that there were all told 10 spaceflight missions that were affected by the parts purchased by SpaceX from PMI, and those included seven NASA flight missions two United States Air Force space flight missions, and one National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration space flight mission. As a result of discovering these uninspected parts and these falsified reports being submitted to them, SpaceX terminated its business relationship with PMI, and PMI uh, averaged about $200,000 a month through their contract with SpaceX. And as a result of this, uh, becoming a disqualified supplier to SpaceX, um, PMI subsequently, subsequently closed its operation, and 35, about 35 Western New Yorkers lost their jobs as a result. I note that the success of America's reinvigorated space program depends not just on American ingenuity, but it also depends on American integrity. The charges contained in this complaint make it clear that those who commit fraud against NASA, the Air Force, NOAA, who are among the government agencies leading our space program, and those private companies, such as SpaceX, with whom the government partners and contracts in this effort, will be held accountable when they seek to cut corners. Such fraudulent conduct jeopardizes not only the success of the program, but the lives of the brave men and women who rely on the integrity of not just the space vehicles themselves, but all those who help to build and design them. I'd like to commend the FBI. With me is the SAC of the Buffalo uh, Division of the FBI, uh, Special Agent in Charge Gary Lofert, for his involvement in the investigation. I'm going to turn it over to him in a second, but I also want to acknowledge the tremendous work done by the NASA Office of Inspector General, uh, the, as well as the U.S. Air Force Office of Special Investigation for their work in this investigation. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Spe Special Agent in Charge Lofert. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Good afternoon, everyone. 
According to the criminal complaint, James Smalley took the act of forgery to a new level. When we think of forgery, we might recall years ago when a student signed his mother's name on a test in which he, re he received a poor grade. Or maybe we are reminded of a time when a family member signed bank, checks, bank checks of an elderly, elderly relative to take advantage of them and empty out their bank account. This is a very different forgery case. James Smalley's alleged acts of forgery involve parts manufactured for SpaceX, and potentially destined for outer space on a rocket ship. Our office will continue to work with NASA's Office of Inspector General, Air Force Office of Special Investigations, and of course the United States Attorney's Office under the direction of uh, United States Attorney Kennedy as this investigation continues. Thank you. Any questions about this matter? I think, I mean, I, I, it seems to be uh, that it was, this conduct was limited to Mr. Smalley himself, so whether it was, you know, indolence or um, whatever, I don't, I, we really don't know that, but I mean, obviously, um, the consequences could have been tremendous. Okay, so with that, we'll start with the, I'll invite the other folks up for the Morgan matter. Thank you for being here today. And today I would like to announce the, the uh, return of a 114 count superseding indictment which charges Robert Morgan, the CEO of Morgan Development or Morgan Management, excuse me, of Pittsburgh, New York, Frank Giacobbe, who owned and operated Aurora Capital Advisors, a mortgage brokerage firm located here in Buffalo, New York, Todd Morgan, the son of Robert Morgan and project manager for Morgan Management as well as Michael Trametti, Director of Finance for Morgan Management. Uh, those individuals, those four individuals, are charged in this indictment um, variously with uh, what amounts to really two different fraud schemes, one involving mortgage fraud and the second involving insurance fraud. All four of these individuals have been variously charged with one count of conspiracy to commit wire fraud and bank fraud, which relates to their mortgage fraud scheme, 81 substantive counts of wire fraud, which again relate to that mortgage fraud scheme, 15 substantive counts of bank fraud relating to that mortgage fraud scheme, and one count of money laundering conspiracy. In addition, Robert and Todd Morgan alone are charged with the remaining counts which involve one count of conspiracy to commit wire fraud related to an inf insurance fraud scheme, and 15 substantive counts of wire fraud related to uh, that insurance fraud scheme. So to begin with, the, the, as I said, two schemes, mortgage fraud, insurance fraud, mortgage fraud. The scheme alleges that between about 2007 and June of 2017, uh, the defendants conspired with other individuals, including Kevin Morgan, Patrick Ogiani, Scott Cresswell, and others, fraudulently to obtain money, funds, credits, assets, and securities, and other property from various financial institutions and government-sponsored entities, which included Freddie Mac, the Federal Home Loan Mortgage Corporation, and Fannie Mae, the Federal National Mortgage Association. The defendants provided false information to these financial institutions and government-sponsored entities, overstating the incomes of properties owned by Mac Morgan Management or certain principles of Morgan, Ma of Morgan Management. They also, uh, the false information that they s provided induced the, these financial institutions to do one of two things either issue loans that they would not have otherwise issued in the first place, or secondly, to authorize loan amounts uh, for amounts greater than the financial institutions would have otherwise authorized had they been provided with truthful information. The value of the loans that were involved in the mortgage fraud scheme which were obtained with false or fraudulent documentation or information exceed 500 million, that's a half a billion dollars. Those properties include some of the 20 properties mentioned in the indictment, along with some others. The total loss sustained by the financial institutions and the government-sponsored entities as a result of the mortgage fraud scheme at this point is to believe to be 
over $25 million. That's the mortgage fraud and bank fraud scheme. The insurance fraud scheme uh, was as follows. And this, the indictment alleges that this separate insurance fraud scheme involved Robert and Todd Morgan, uh, and they're alleged to have committed insurance fraud by submitting two insurance companies false and fraudulent or false and inflated contracts for property repairs as well as inflated invoices to insurance companies for uh, repairs that they purportedly paid for. The loss amounts alleged in that insurance fraud scheme set forth in this indictment at this time is believed to be about a $3 million. And as I mentioned, the indictment identifies 20 different commercial multifamily properties that were either involved uh, or affiliated, uh, affected by this mortgage fraud and insurance fraud scheme. Those include eight properties here in Western New York. They're listed uh, and include the Creek Hill Apartments in Rochester, Hickory Hollow in Rochester, the Knollwood Manor Apartments in Rochester, the Pembroke Meadows Apartments in Rochester, the Lynx at Center Point in Canandaigua, and the Avon uh, Commons Apartments in Avon, New York, along with Union Square Apartments, also in Rochester, and the Villas of Victor, also in Rochester. There are three properties in the Northern District of New York, two in Syracuse, one in Watertown, five different properties in, P in Pennsylvania, uh, four in the Pittsburgh area, and one down in York, Pennsylvania, along with four other properties located in different cities across the United States, including uh, 7100 Shore Drawer, South Shore Drive Apartments located in Chicago, the Morgan Bay Apartments in Houston, Texas, the Overlook at Golden Hills in Lexington, South Carolina, as well as the Trails of North Hills Apartments located in Raleigh, North Carolina. These charges reflect this office's commitment to ensuring that those who do business with the mortgage, banking, and insurance industries act with honesty and integrity. The scope of the dishonesty and deceit alleged here, both in, geographic in the geographic sense as well as in a dollar amount uh, of the mortgages and properties involved, uh, is very expansive. This type, of fraud, this type of fraud strikes at the very heart of those banking, insurance, and mortgage industries. I'd like to commend the FBI and the Federal Housing Finance Agency Office of Inspector General for the significant resources they devoted to this investigation in order to uncover the full scope of the illegal conduct alleged in this superseding indictment. With me, as I mentioned earlier, I have with me the SAC of the Buffalo Division of the FBI, Gary Lofert, as well as the SAC of the Northeast Region of the Federal Housing Finance Agency Office of, Inspec Office of Inspector Gen General, Robert Manchek. And I'd turn it over to Special Agent Lofert at this time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon. As U.S. Attorney Kennedy said, tomorrow will mark exactly one year since we announced the first four indictments in this multi-year investigation. At that time, we told you our investigation would continue, and it did. The breadth of the alleged fraud uncovered has grown wider and greater. With today's announcement, announcements, the number of people charged in this case has reached seven. Last May, I stood here alongside our partners and said we believed our work would have significant impact. I said we hope the facts revealed in the indictments would help educate and protect tens of thousands of investors who own mortgage-backed securities. Since that day, this case has garnered the attention of people working in our business and financial communities across Buffalo and Rochester, throughout New York State and beyond. This case reveals how those committing fraud for profit, as alleged in the indictments, misuse the mortgage lending process to steal money. Today's charges allege Robert Morgan and the men he surrounded himself with in business worked hard with the desire to creatively subvert the integrity of the financial industry. And in response, together we worked just as hard and creati creatively to put a stop to it. We will continue to join forces with the United States Attorney's Office and the Federal Housing Finance Agency Office of Inspector General to pursue our work and to accomplish our mission. Thank you. Mr. Kennedy? I'd be re remiss also, too, if I didn't mention the two other gentlemen up here with me, Assistant United States Attorney 
John Fabian to my right and to my left, Assistant United States Attorney Doug Penrose, both of whom have worked on this case since its inception, and they're the ones that are actually uh, uh, overseeing the investigation and will uh, proceed with the trial in this matter. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Special Agent in Charge, Manchek. Good afternoon. On behalf of Laura Wertheimer, the Inspector General for the Federal Housing Finance Agency, I would like to thank United States Attorney James C. Kennedy, Special Agent in Charge Gary Lofert, and the Assistant United States Attorneys and other law enforcement officials who spent countless hours working on this very important case. Today, with our law enforcement partners, we have disrupted an ongoing fraud scheme in the financing of multifamily loans a significant segment of Fannie Mae's and Freddie Mac's business portfolio. As these charges demonstrate, the Office of Inspector General is committed to holding accountable those who seek to victimize the entities regulated by FHFA. I look forward to our continued partnership to accomplish that mission. Thank you. Open it up to any questions. Yes, I mean, we will continue with our investigation. Um, as I said, I mean, throughout this, uh, we're going to we're gonna, uh, try and uncover every aspect of this fraud. I mean, there's, there's, I think it's fair to say that there's additional holdings and additional properties that we continue to look into, uh, but the investigation is ongoing. Yes. Gary. One, you mentioned the $25 million loss approximately with a mortgage fraud. I was curious how you come to that number, and two, I think, if I'm right, just somebody, if there's a $276 million forfeiture, that's about yes. right? Yeah. And what is that based on? Yeah. And explain that, John. John Fabian. The, yeah. the, the, the loss figure in mortgage fraud cases like this is calculated by taking the uh, current amount uh, of a loan on a, owed on a loan on a property and subtracting the market value of the property. So uh, we have uh, uh, a number of properties that in the aggregate have $25 million uh, in loss currently uh, or that we estimate to exceed $25 million between what is owed on the property and the market value of the property. Uh, as far as the uh, uh, amount in the forfeiture allegation in the indictment, though that is uh, comprised of the loan amounts for the properties identified in the Count one, section 1349 conspiracy, and the substantive bank fraud charges. And that, that explains the discrepancy of 500 million, so it's not all the properties that are in those counts? Then? That's correct. As, as uh, the, the U.S. Attorney stated, the five, $500 million figure includes uh, properties that would be considered relevant conduct that uh, are part of the, the fraud uh, conspiracy but are not named in this indictment. Any other questions? Go ahead. Well, as alleged in, in the indictment, he was the CEO of Morgan Management. Uh, he oversaw the operations. Um, there's been other pleas in this case that indicate uh, some of what his role was, but beyond that, we're sort of um, confined to the allegations contained in the indictment, and uh, that, that will be more fully explored when this case goes to trial. Well, I think Mar that was a, a, an incident at which there were losses sustained, um, and there is, as alleged in the indictment, uh, there were basically inflated invoices submitted to the insurance company for reimbursement, uh, as well as, um, you know, overestimating the loss amounts uh, for claims submitted as well. Can you tell more touched on this? Are there other properties that I know that he owns in, in Ohio, for example? Are those being investigated or other properties that he has still being looked at? We're going to look at all, all of the holdings of Morgan Management. Is there any, any connection to this project at this time? Or? Uh, again, we're not going to get into, uh, I mean, a possible, uh, at this point, th there, there is no allegations involving the Gates project. Can you share a timeline? It goes back to, I, I believe, 2007 is set forth in the indictment. I'll defer to uh, Mr. Fabian. 
That's correct. The um, the uh, count one of the indictment charges of uh, uh, conspiracy to commit wire fraud and bank fraud from uh, 2007 through uh, June of 2017, and the uh, sub substantive bank fraud counts uh, alleged in the indictment also fall within that time frame. Uh, and may uh, there may be addition, uh, uh, additional counts just beyond that. And the time frame from the jury trial? The time frame from the inter insurance fraud, uh, as set forth in the indictment, uh, the, if you look at the counts in the indictment, are largely in the um, 2000 early to mid 2017 time frame, extending through uh, 2018. Uh, Grain Atlas, the successor to Morgan Management, is that believed in your part to be a, a truly separate company, or is that largely Morgan Management recreated with the same people? Grain Atlas, it is mentioned in the indictment, and uh, again, I'm gonna, just going to limit our, at, at this point our comments to what's contained in the indictment. Well, at this point, nothing's happening to the apartments. Um, you know, I encourage uh, the tenants to uh, continue to monitor the situation. But uh, as, as far as day-to-day -day operations, uh, I don't believe that there will be any impact at this point, um, and that there's, I mean, uh, really nothing for them to, to worry about at this point. Well, one last question: Is there any concern with the, the parent transaction, the movement of from the management company to control as many of the apartments to harbor international kind of? With that at all? Well, there's concern with all the transactions involved here. So, I mean, I, you know, to to characterize it um, beyond that, I, I, I really don't. We really can't get into that. It's not part of this indictment. Go ahead. Um, is there any indication the legislature would do it with public projects with a large owner that would really benefit from the I think that uh, for uh, purpose of answering that question, again, we're, we're limited to the conduct charged in the indictment. The investigation, as the U.S. Attorney indicated, uh, uh, is expansive and ongoing, but at this juncture, uh, we would limit our comments to what is alleged in the indictment. Thank you.